Right, so this is, will be, uh, right, um, so this will be part two of um, my review discussion of uh, Blood Meridian or the Evening, Wed Evening, <laughs> Evening Redness in the West uh, by Cormac McCarthy. Uh, so this is Nathaniel Sullivan um, drawing and talking, right, um, probably know the shtick, if you don't, uh, right, it's a pretty obvious shtick, it's simply... Um, a book review or discussion of Conor McCarthy uh, or, or this particular novel. Um, so this is part two. Um, and it, it, when I left off in part one, I was beginning to get into something of the, the story uh, of the, the novel. Um, and as I was saying, the story such as it is, um, I mean, as, as, I, as I indicated, a lot of uh, blood written, um, incredibly bloody book really uh, given over to um, slaughter, right, extensive um, bloodshed, so accordingly um, <clears throat> there's not that much of a plot or not really, it's not not really a plot book, it's not really um, its thing, but as I was saying um, it's taken up with the protagonist, mainly taken up with the protagonist known only um, as the kid and um, <laughs> the protagonist the, the antagonist who I suppose you call the judge well not called, but he is called the judge who, who's very much um, I think pretty clearly war god or a god of war um, featured um, in this book. But yeah, we, be, we begin um, with the kid and we follow him. And, um, you know, he's, as I indicated, right, very early on, there's the line, um, uh, something like even then, even at this young age, um, he had a taste. We already had developed taste. We already had a taste uh, for senseless violence. Um, yeah, and he, a lot of the kid's existence um, is pretty pointless, right? It is, it, it is um, he engages in these pointless kind of fights, uh, he's, he's desperately poor, um, and he's incredibly violent. You know, and, and it doesn't, um, predictably enough, it doesn't uh, always go well for him, it always go well for the kid. In fact, um, as I indicated at the end of the book, uh, the kid is finally... Uh, killed by the judge, right? It doesn't um, end well for him. Now, I, I should also add that, except for perhaps with the possible exception of the judge, um, nothing ends well uh, for anyone um, in, in this world, in this novel. This is not a, this is not a novel where uh, things end well for people. That's simply not, um, that's simply not uh, going to be the case. Uh, you know, these are people putting themselves in, in truly awful uh, situations, getting themselves into truly awful situations, and and very much, um, you know, paying the price. And then that, that, that's you're going to find that um, throughout. Right? Things things are not going to things do not go happily um, <coughs> for the, the characters, uh, to say, say the least. Um, so what to, what to say about, and as I said, you know, I think this creates like one of the, the possible problems, one of the possible um, difficulties uh, for the novel. I mean, because look, once you get uh, that the, once you understand that um, theme, I mean, once you pick up that, the notion that uh, life is, is slaughter, right, that these um, characters are kind of dedicated to senseless violence, I mean, violence of how really... A guiding purpose. I mean, they, they have a real, they have a taste for it. They, they have a taste um, for these conflicts, but these conflicts are not really in the service of anything. Um, as I was saying, I, I mean, I think one of the possible difficulties, or perhaps one of the shortcomings of the novel, is that once you've got that message, I mean, I'm not really sure um, how much there is to say, and if it can really carry um, the novel for for all for all these pages. Now, on the other hand, I, I will say. Um, I do want to quickly add, I mean, the writing um, is amazing. The writing, the writing is astounding. Um, it's, it's engaging. I mean, I, I've read the, the book twice and, and enjoyed it um, very much uh, both times. The, the use of language um, is, is nothing short of um, amazing, and it's really worth, <coughs> it's very much worth checking uh, the book out for that. And, you know, to be fair um, to the message of the book, um, if you go back and, and read uh, the Iliad, right? If you go back and, and take a take a kind of careful look at the Iliad, um, I mean, a lot of ways the Iliad, uh, I, I, I think you could probably argue, um, is reduced to a kind of. I mean, there are there are places where Homer the, the slaughter is just so much, right? The, the slaughter is just so ongoing that Homer is 
Uh, I guess I think he's just naming names at some point, naming names of the dead, right? Not even getting into the descriptions of of how of all the bloodshed um, that's taking place. So, so there, there's something uh, there's something to be said for those. I mean, there's something to be said to to those in, in this novel, right? This thing. I mean that it does become tiresome, right? That it. I mean, if if you're going to write about the truth of senseless violence, or you're going to write about the truth of this this kind of um, ongoing senseless um, conflict, it's going to become. It, it's it, in some ways it's got to become tiresome. Um, it is tiresome. Right? It, it is exhausting. And, and McCarthy's um, book picks up on some of that. Although it is, um, it, it, it is quite brief. Right? It's not really a particularly long uh, book. It's not really. Uh, yeah, 333 pages, 300 337 pages, right? So not particularly long, not particularly long book. Um, so, you know, and it does give, um, I mean, I, I would, I'll give McCarthy, I, I think he, deserves, he gets a lot of credit. I mean, there's some very, um, there's some very evocative, there's some very brilliant parts of the book. Um, there's some, predictably, I guess, or not surprisingly, there's, there's some wonderful, um, Gallo's humor. I think he has a real. Um, he, he, you have to give him. You have to give him um, credit for picking up on this, right? For getting uh, this kind of real. I'm not. I'm not quite sure how. To, I'm not sure quite how to describe. It. I'm not quite quite sure what to, would say about it. But I, there's a kind of humor. Um, I don't know. I, I, a kind of tough guy humor. I think almost. Um, it's a silly example, but the the video game um, Red Dead Redemption also a western. Um, the hero, right? The nominal hero goes to the sheriff's department, and, or goes to the local sheriff, and the sheriff says, you know, "Feel like making yourself useful today, and feel like making yourself feel like being useful today." And the hero says, "Not particularly." Right? And that there's very much that kind of humor um, in, in parts of, um, I mean, <laughs> all those rel relentlessly uh, or ruthlessly bleak books, and the moments of humor are far are few and far between. Um, Although there is, there is, I will mention there is this one great part where the kid um, and um, someone else are there, uh, uh, and, and guys, a compatriot. I, I don't really think a, a former gang uh, and, and a fellow gang member, certainly probably not a friend. <laughs> Friends are just not really um, something you find um, in, in this book. They're, they're in a Mexican prison and um, the fr they're, they, they predictably they hate the jailer, right? Predictably the jailer is, is pretty cruel to them and so. Um, the friend's uh, compatriot uh, says something like, um, he mentions the jailer, I think green teeth or something like the jailer has these rotten green teeth or maybe no teeth or something like this. But the, the friend says, you know, I, I, I worry about him. I pray every day to, for, to the Lord to keep him safe. Right? I pray every day to keep my, I pray every day to the Lord uh, to keep my jailer safe. And of course the reason uh, that he's praying to the Lord uh, to keep his jailer safe, to preserve um, his jailer so that he he will get the chance to kill him, right? He wants uh, God to keep this man safe so that he will get uh, the chance to slaughter him himself. Um, it's pretty funny, um, and it's very much uh, in keeping uh, with the, the tone of the book. And, and, and it's, it's, I mean, give, give McCarthy credit uh, for having a good eye uh, for, that kind of, for that kind of humor. Um, there's a lot to be said for that. Um, Great eye uh, for nature. I, I really can't, um, yeah, I really can't praise enough. Kind of the descriptions, how how good the descriptions of the natural world are, right? How um, evocative it is, right? How powerful the use of language is. I mean, this book is really, um, is really wonderful and really worth uh, checking out uh, for that reason. Um, <clears throat> let me begin. So then, let me get into some. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how you want to say criticisms, perhaps, but some mild. Um, sort of questions about the book. I, I'm not sure. I'm not even sure these would be criticisms. Um, as I said, the book is often um, compared to um, Iliad. It's often. It's also often compared um, to Moby Dick. By the way, I should also just say it gets like Moby Dick, like the Iliad. Um, it gets major, major points for uh, most of it. Um, the, the, by f the vast majority of the book uh, taking place. Um, outside, I, I cannot praise that enough. I cannot say enough uh, nice things about that. Uh, I mean, I realize that's a subjective preference, but it's something I really look for um, in novels. Right, the, the more you know, if, if it's outside, if it's outside, I'm, I'm going to be a lot, a lot happier 
and um, a tremendous amount of this uh, takes place outside, right? pretty much all of it. And that, and that way it does really remind me of the movie Dick and, and of course, of the Iliad, and, of course, reminds me of the Iliad. Um, just in terms of its outright of the outright slaughter, right? The outright bloodiness. Although I will, you know, I, I will say one thing. I, I, I'm kind of struck by, which is kind of um, there's a there's a physicality, and right? there's a real kind of um, if you go back and read Homer, if you go back and read the Iliad, there's a real um, physicality, right? There, there's a real uh, I, I don't know very um, um, Homer um, incredibly. I, I don't know, evocative of the physical reality of what's going on. Really, it, it, the writing is really um, brings home the physical nature uh, of the slaughter uh, that's taking place. I don't really find as much of that um, in this book. I don't really find as much of that. Um, I, oh, I certainly, and in some ways, the comparison's not fair. But I don't really think there's as much of that um, with McCarthy. I don't think it's not as um, evocative. It's not as as as, as kind of fri kind of horrifying physical right, as. as um, as Homer, but yeah, again, I, I, that's probably not a, a fair comparison. Um, I mean, so I think the, the I think the problems with um, comparing this uh, to Moby Dick or um, to the Iliad, um, and, and again, I, I, I excellent book. I've read it twice. I'll read it. I'll certainly read it again this year. It's, it's well, it's well worth your time. Um, it, it certainly falls short of the Iliad, and it certainly falls short of Moby Dick in a lot of ways. I just, I just don't think those um, comparisons are, are very fair. Um, but they, and, and, I, and I, I wouldn't want to make them. Um, but I think they do help. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to at least raise them here. I think they help um, illustrate. Help, help, they gonna, I hope they're going to help me to illustrate <coughs> a, a point, which is that um, look one of. One of the measures uh, for a great book, one of the measures for um, a really great book, is whether or not it gives us memorable characters, whether or not it gives us, uh, you know, particularly memorable scenes. Um, I, I just I don't think that uh, I don't think Blood Meridian um, does that. I don't think Blood Meridian uh, pulls that off. I mean, the Iliad, um, Achilles, Hector, Paris, um, Helen, uh, Priam. Uh, uh, you know, um, Briseis, I, I could go on and on. The, the scene where the um, the serpents come up on the, on the shore and kill the priest, Ajax, um, Menelaus. I mean, the, the names, right? The, the images, uh, the image of um, Achilles chasing Hector, man killing Hector around the walls of uh, Priam's town, around, around the walls of Troy. I mean, it, it just, um, the. the it, Iliad, and this is a great, a mark of great literature, um, given us just tremendous um, characters, right? Given us incredibly uh, memorable characters. Um, I don't think um, I don't think Blood Meridian does that. I don't think Blood Meridian um, pulls that off. Um, you know, are the characters interesting? Um, yes, although in some ways, right, they can't be because again, um, a lot of the point of this is a taste or a real. A lot, of, a lot of the point of this um, is a senseless slaughter. Um, it's it's that you know a person given over to that is, is almost by definition kind of not going to be um, particularly interesting. If that's what you're into, right? If senseless slaughter um, is your thing, and once that's spelled out, I'm not really sure how much there is to say. So the judge, the kid, uh, Glanta, and the others. I mean, yeah, these are interesting characters, um, but certainly not memorable. Um, in the way that, that, that I think uh, they are in, in great literature, or, or you know, that, that would make it a hall, uh, their hallmark of great literature. Or you think of Wuthering Heights. Um, I didn't, you know, personally, I wasn't that crazy about Wuthering Heights. I mean, I found it pretty tough. I found it pretty, uh, pretty hard going. I just didn't particularly like the people in a lot of ways, and I found them hard to relate to. Um, be that as it may, um, Heathcliff, the other characters from Wuthering Heights, I mean, uh, very memorable, right? These, these are kind of um, great characters in literature. And Dickens, right? It would just be um, you know, probably, the, well, Shakespeare would be the preeminent example, and, and Dickens very close, right? Some of the authors have given us characters that you simply uh, are not going to forget. So also then, you know, also the comparison to Moby Dick. Yeah, I, I don't really, I mean, no. I mean, um, Blood Meridian doesn't give us an Ahab. It doesn't give us 
an Ishmael, it doesn't give us a Queequeg or a Tashtigo, or it doesn't give us a Starbuck, right? It doesn't, it doesn't give us characters um, on, on, on that. It doesn't give us characters of that quality. And, 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 and you know, I, I don't really think that's a criticism. I mean, that's an, that, that would be, that'd be incredibly uh, difficult. It's incredibly difficult and rare uh, to get characters like that. So I don't, I don't want that to sound like a criticism. Um, touching on Moby Dick for a second, um, one of the, one of the, as I th as I indicated before, I, mean, I think one of the possible shortcomings of Blood Meridian um, is the lack of a kind of competing voice, right? The lack of a, a, another sort of voice, um, I, I, especially a voice to answer the judge, right? To answer the war god uh, of the novel. Um, I mean, this is a problem. I mean, the, the kid at one point does seem to challenge him, or the kid does seem to uh, present some kind of a challenge, but. The, the kid doesn't really articulate things. I mean, it, it, it's kind of a tough part of, of the book. I mean, except for the judge, um, characters don't really um, articulate things. They don't really give. They don't really give too much voice um, to thoughts, right? They don't give too much. They don't give too much voice to ideas. Um, you know, this is very much in contrast uh, to Moby Dick, where where um, Ahab has Starbuck, right? And, and you know, if you read. Uh, Moby Dick, at one point, uh, a, you know, Starbucks says what you, the reader, are almost certainly thinking, which is, look, um, Captain Ahab, it was a dumb animal that lashed out at you, right? This, this whale that you're chasing, this whale that you feel uh, that you have to uh, hunt down and kill for the offense, right? For, for, for what it did, for what it did to you. Um, it's just a dumb animal. It's just this natural um, thing. It's just a stupid beast. Um, and you know, th this whole operation is, is really kind of uh, is, is really kind of senseless, right? We should um, we should leave off doing this um, and make money, right? Be productive, uh, be about our business, and, and get some things done. Um, now Ahab has a response to this, but but it's a powerful moment uh, in the book, right? It, it's a um, it, it's a real challenge to Ahab. It's a real challenge to what he's doing, and, and that conflict is quite interesting. Um, not really. I don't really think you find that uh, in Blood and I don't really think you find that kind of other side being presented, um, and and I th and I think that would um, be helpful. Right? I think there would be um, something to be said for that. Right? But it, again, I mean, it, it's going to be tough to do um, in this kind of novel. I mean, if your point is that man is given to slaughter, right? Man is given um, to violence, right? If this is the um, natural state of man. Um, it's, you, you, your characters, right? You're not going to be. Um, it's going to be. Ha it's going to be hard to have that kind of that kind of dialogue, that kind of uh, that kind of discussion uh, between characters, right? There's just too much um, slaughter uh, taking place. Um, so that that's briefly. Um, I think there's there's that briefly. So all right. So I'm going to pause here uh, and turn and uh, end this one. So. Um, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Much appreciated. Uh, yeah, thanks. All right, take care. Peace out.